TV. I'm with Zoltan from Five Finger Death Punch. All right? That's right. How are you guys doing? Doing really well. And uh, you're playing later on tonight? Yeah, we're going to uh, play around. I don't even know the time. 11? Yeah, yeah, 10 yeah, 40, 10 yeah, 40, something yeah. like that. Yeah. yeah. We are headlining. Imagine that. Four, yeah. year, four years ago, we just had a whole owner. Yeah. Yes. Can, are you guys FCC regulated? Can, can I say fuck on TV or no? Oh! <laughs> I like you guys very much better right away. <laughs> right on. Yeah, it's, it's pretty pretty fucking awesome. We are, you know, it's been the band started in 05. So two, 2005 and it's five years later. It's, uh, it's yeah. pretty good. Yeah, it's a really, it seems to be a really fast rise, you know. I mean, I saw you at Danlo last year, it was really good. Yeah, man, it's like, you know what, we didn't we didn't know what to expect. You know, I figured like, okay, we're in England, you guys, you guys love to drink. It was the second day of the festivals. I figured, you know, everybody gonna be in their tent. You know, still snoring, we're gonna go on stage and probably half of that, you know, the festival will still be, you know, fucking sleeping. And um, just by the time we were approaching the stage, I could hear like that punch, that punch, I'm like, holy shit, you know. <laughs> and then we walk on stage, was like, as far as I saw just people, like, you know, like melted into the horizon. So that was pretty amazing, you know. What do you think to the setup here for a festival? Do you like it? Oh, yeah, I mean, like, you know, festivals were always really um, advanced. Just I would be, I would say I may, maybe I make up English words so don't don't mind me. Uh, it's it's always good for us to play festivals because you know we're hitting a lot of people who maybe you know may not come at the show like you know what I mean like there, there's this, it's this perception because you know we had a couple of songs that kind of broke to radio you know and um, heavier bands don't get on radio you know. And it, 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 Five Finger Death Punch is a pretty fucking heavy band, you know what I mean? It's but a lot of people who hear only like the bleeding or a couple of songs that actually made it to radio. They don't realize that, you know, the whole band is pretty heavy. We just happened to have a couple of songs that kind of, you know, got in the cracks and made it onto radio. And then and then when we have a festival situation like this and uh, they see us play, it's like, oh shit, this is like, this is a, a, a real, you know, it's a heavy band, you know? And um, so that, that's why it's always good because, you know, it's, it's just, you know, if people judge us by what they hear on the, on the radio you know I mean how many metal bands you really hear on the radio in fact we are proud of it that we actually broke too you know yeah. especially in America I mean you know you have Nickel back and then whatever you know nothing wrong with them but that's what radio plays and for us you know then I hear this funny you know quotations like radio five you know five finger that punch writes songs for radio and all that shit right it's stupid hey eh? you can't write the songs for radio because that's not how it works and and some and it was a struggle for us, you know what I mean? Like originally it was really difficult. One song somehow broke through and even then it took us like eight months of pounding, you know? And literally how radio works, people were calling in. And if people are not calling in, the radio will stop playing your song. That's how this works. So by a band getting on radio, it's, it's, it has nothing to do with really with us or, you know, how we sound like. It has to do with something what people want to hear and why they call in. So that's, what, that's how it happened. Like, it, Took us eight months by that song finally went top ten and from there kind of like the door busted open. But it's good for metal in general because that means like you know radio started to look at least in the States, they started to look at uh you know the musical spectrum as in wow, so after all the audience actually is ready for hearing something heavier because we were heavier than what's on the radio. So actually actually this is pushing you know the mainstream a little bit closer to heavier stuff and you know still they're not gonna play you know Behemoth or whatever, they're not gonna play those bands you know but 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 still you know heavier bands get a little bit of a, a, a better chance to get on the radio and then it's just simple as that if, if, if you know if heavy metal is out of the, the the mainstream out of the spotlight I mean simply people will not hear it and then of course every, everybody's gonna bitch about oh radio sucks oh TV sucks of course you know because if there are no bands who who bridge the gap who are kind of just pushing the envelope enough that they can make it there you know what I mean but you know but they're acceptable by that means mainstream media censorship then then you're not gonna have attention on the genre period so I think I think bands like us is necessity and you know it's a necessary step and you know it's like myself I listen to Iron Maiden still I listen to accept and bands that that's what I like you know what I mean I don't give a shit that you know somebody thinks like oh cannibal corpse is real metal I don't care what real metal is you know what I mean what I care about is this is the kind of music I like you know and that's what we do and I can't care less about anybody's opinion you know it depends what you call real metal I mean if you, if you talk, talking real metal it all starts with sound 
Sabbath. I mean, it's become more old school than Sabbath. You know. Like, yeah. yeah. That, if you want to say that's real metal, that's real metal. Yeah, I mean, like, look, for, for example, you pick, like, perfect, like you said, Sabbath, or, or pick Judas Priest, or you pick Iron Maiden. If, if you pit those bands against the heavy bands of today, those bands are going to sound pretty light, you know, compared. So, but would you would you say Judas Priest is not metal? Well, fuck you, Judas Priest started metal, you know what I mean? That's where the name came from, man. See what I mean? It's like, what the fuck? You know, anybody who would, who, would, who would say, like, Judas Priest is not metal is a fucking moron, you know what I mean? Simple as that. So, you know, and then you... You have these newer bands that are, are extremely heavy, or or like us that kind of like balances on the tip of the sword. We are heavy, but we have melodic passage, and because that's what we like. That's what you know. That's what I grew up on. I love fucking Judas Priest. I love you know Iron Maiden. That's that's what we do, and you know. And I think I think um, it's it's a crazy thing to 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 think that the genre can survive without bands who will you know nobody started to listen to Venom when I was growing up. You needed to work yourself up there. You know what I mean? I mean, you started having something, and you know it's just how it works. That's that's what it is. I mean, there's lots of subgenres at the moment, and people are sort of saying, "Well, I only listen to black metal. I only listen to power metal. I only listen." And I think they're missing out. It's metal. It's just metal. Yeah, I mean, that's yeah. One thing, the other one, the guys start dating girls, you know, that maybe would happen, you know, sitting in mom's basement and then and trying to fucking figure out what band belongs to what subgenre. It's pretty much a waste of fucking time, you know. It's like when we were, grew up in this thing, you know, it was just metal, and 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 for us it was, you know, anybody who was into the same thing. Immediately, there was this brotherhood, you know, we were just friends right away. Like, oh, you're into the same shit, yeah, and we would trade tapes and shit, you know. That's what we were doing, and and now. Now, it's kind of got segregated in a way of like some dude gonna say like oh yeah exactly I'm listening to death metal so you're not cool because you listen to grindcore I mean fuck off what's the what the fuck is the diff you know what I mean like it's like you know because you know you, you're trying to make a difference between you know I don't know there are all kind of flies well look all flies end on you know land on shit they're just flies you know what I mean it's like it, you can you can segregate it that it's a it's the African dong fly or the you know whatever the North American whatever it's still a fly, you know, and it's whatever, dude. I think I think it's it's pretty pointless to to try to figure out what what band is what metal. Hi, hi, hi. We are on television. No, we can't speak. We, the, see, this is what I'm talking about. The censorship came and tried to stop us from talking about metal, and we're not gonna give in. Keep keep going. We're not gonna give in. We. This is what it is. Defending the faith, man. Roll that fucking thing. Oh, we got a question from somebody. This one was sent in. It's from Sherry. Sheridan Kelly says, what were your first tattoos and why? Oh, I can't show you my first tattoo. <laughs> and uh, it's, a, it's a stretching thing, you know. But uh, it changes shapes in different circumstances. Okay, well, uh, actually my first tattoo was um, a forearm tattoo. I have um, from here to here. I'm not going to... It's, it's yeah. basically covered all black. It's a Tibetan tattoo. And, and uh, for me, it was... Um, there had to be a significance, you know, to a tattoo. I just didn't want to put, like, I don't know... Freddy, Freddy Krueger is on my arm. Like, why? You know, you know, it just made no sense. I wanted a tattoo that makes sense to me. And I was, um, you know, I was studying all kind of Buddhism, and you know, I I spent a lot of time with uh, with monks from from the Himalayas and whatnot. And um, I learned a lot of shit. And you know, and, and one of the things that um, kind of grabbed me uh, came from the tantric Buddhist monks, and and it's kind of the the idea of of like this tattoo is a Tibetan flame, basically. It's, it's 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 always with me. It always reminds me to just fucking you know, you got this one shot right here, right now, and, and make it count. You know, the, they they say this. Um, there's a saying of, of it's better to burn out in a flash than just smolder away. It's kind of like that. Like my tattoo kind of reminds me that. Like you go full force, and the, and the censorship trying to stop us again, and we're not gonna give in. <laughs> see see, this is what happens to heavy metal, guys. We, we, here we are trying to. Serve Survive and then and then all of a sudden the, the censorship run up to us and trying to stop the cameras. I think we need to fight. Yeah. We need to fight. Well anyway. Metal Gods TV is fighting for metal right there. If you saw it, there is a three a three man crew here. You guys can't see it because the rest of the guys are off camera wrestling right now the, the censorship. So that's how this rolls. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you guys. <laughs>